Over the next five weeks, we're going to be talking about assessment. And one of the things I love about teaching and learning languages is that there's so many ways to assess your learning. And we're going to talk about some really simple ones and some more complicated ones. So let's get into it. Uh, this very first one is exactly as you see, it's just the hand. That's it. Basically, if you've got a closed fist, it means you can't do anything. And then you just open up your pinky's words. Two fingers means you can do phrases, three are sentences, five are paragraphs, open hand for extended speech that you can do these things. I know that most people in language classes, um, you know, it, sort of school age, aren't necessarily going to be doing that. And that's not necessarily terribly useful for that. But I, I really like to hear that, um, listen out for that or ask, teach people how to kind of do that for themselves that like, that'll give you a good idea of your range, right? If you don't know anything, obviously you're in the novice or a range. If you can do a little bit, when you get up to those sentences, your B intermediate paragraphs, B intermediate, you're moving into that C advanced and extended speech. So I always do this on myself for the different languages um, I have. And it's not something, as you see, these ranges are, they're huge. And it's not, it's not formal. But it's a good check in and I think it's a good check in for learners too. if you teach languages. Um, it gives you an idea of where they are. So if they're past they're into the sentences and they're getting into paragraphs, that means, you know, th that's going to be a very different type of lesson that you're going to give than to somebody who's down at words or somebody who's in extended speech. This is probably more useful for independent language teachers than for academic school language teachers, because sometimes they have tests that place them in certain places. But I think it's a really good thing. I think it's a good thing to listen to also for native speakers. Um, you can kind of listen out for their range of what they they produce and then put them in the appropriate place. And of course, we have the actful inverted pyramid, which I think is brilliant. And you know, you'll see it kind of expanding as it represents more and more things that a person can do with languages. I think it's really super useful. And their sight is super useful. So of course, that the blue range is you, you're relying on memorized words and phrases, the green range, you can create when you get out of the green range, you can start creating sentences to paragraphs, and then it gets into paragraphs in the orange range. And then that yellow range is, you know, really 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 high you can work professionally probably sound like a native speaker in most cases um so really useful and helpful i think actful always also has the can do statement so they have a list of different things that people can do in those different ranges and they have a pretty extensive list on their website very helpful for both teachers and learners and it can help guide your own learning if you want to work on your own language teaching and then i want to talk about tasks so a task is something that you can do in a language and it can be as simple as greeting someone appropriately and it can be is complicated as giving a speech in another language about healthcare. I mean, it could be anything. And I think it's a great way to assess. It's just, can I do it? Can I do it? And I think it's a great way to frame learning. So what's the task? Okay, well, the task is we want to be able to talk about what the people in our lives look like right? Or be able to describe people. That's a task. And so then the task, all the language you need centers around that task. Or for example, if you were to, the task is to explain, to be able to return something or to be able to a store and to be able to get a refund. 
right? What's all the language that you would need for that? And we'll also talk about assessing yourself with speaking activities. So this is a really, this is the, the people at italki gave me this. I thought it was really clever. I think it's a really good video. Let's see if we can play it. You can see. So it's just supposed to meant to be a, like a language lesson in action. And what's great about italki and I, I'm sure there's other apps that do the same thing, but basically you can, you can speak with a native speaker and, or a highly proficient non-native speaker and it's a great assessment because did you get through the conversation, right? Were you able to talk about what you needed to talk about? Were you able to understand? And then you acquire lots of language at the same time. It's really a great activity and can be adapted to any language at any level of learner. Uh, next week, we're gonna be talking about more ways to assess language. Until next time.